Channel 4's been the place for cricket this summer, and this was the final of the NatWest Trophy. Lancashire win the 1998 NatWest Trophy. Last year it was Wazi Makram who held aloft the NatWest Trophy. Will it be the turn today of Jamie Cox or Mark Elaine? A Somerset and Gloucester meet in an all-West country affair, the last of the millennium. Very good evening and welcome to the highlights of the 1999 NatWest Trophy Final between Gloucestershire and Somerset, the last great cricketing occasion of the summer. Lords looked a picture on a very, very sunny Sunday morning. The two captains out in the middle were Mark Elaine and Jamie Cox and when the, the coin went up in the air, it was Jamie Cox who called correctly. Now, he surprised everybody on the, this gorgeous morning by choosing to field first. It looked a pretty good pitch to bat on. That's the side that he announced with Pierre and Holloway, one of the players the selectors will be keeping an eye on. Andrew Caddick, of course, uh, in very good form. And Graham Rose has been recalled, an experienced campaigner to go alongside Paul Jarvis in uh, the bowling department. And then uh, the Gloucestershire side, they have other players that the selectors will be keeping an eye on. Uh, Robert Cunliffe and Matt Windows are amongst them. Mark Elaine, the captain. And then down the bottom of the list, that very good new ball bowler, Mike Smith. We're going to pick up play now. The score is five for no wicket in the second over of the day. Graham Rose is bowling to Tim Hancock, and it's Ian Smith and Richie Benno in the commentary box. They're just out of the reach of Pure and Holloway at point. The bowler can't retrieve it in time from deep third man. about it it's about the spot that uh, Andy Caddick has bowled throughout the summer and is just starting to settle into now gets the batsman half forward oh! that's a bit like uh, Adam Perore shouldering arms in the test to one on middle stump and having it cartwheel back to the keeper yeah and this one didn't move either fortunately it went straight through and oh goodness me Uh, have anything much worse than that a no ball and it's a half volley or thereabouts on leg stump anyway just asking to be hit for four I think it might just be time for the captain to have a word in his ear square drive not too much wrong with the ball Andy Caddick first time he's been hit for four today <laughs> yeah. 
just missing the leg stump, I would say. I wonder what Tawazi Macron thinks. Looks close. Good morning, everyone. You can see the red zone there. It's definitely going towards leg side. That's a poor ball. Attempt at the slower ball from Jarvis. And looped out as a nice, juicy, full toss. Oh, we have a mix-up. And we have another mix-up. Mix-up one was uh, Gloucestershire. Mix-up two in attempting to run out Hancock was Somerset. when nobody on the ground quite knows how far away it is from the theatre. Indeed, one or two Gloucester supporters may have been concerned that it was a possible catch. In the end, it wasn't anywhere near, and the 50 is up. That is the fourth wide from Paul Jarvis this over. last to Jarvis gets one straight mind you that's the tenth ball of the over already giving it the huge slash again it's almost a mirror image of the one a couple of overs ago with Jarvis offering the width to the batsman Luck. Fortune favours the brave. To the extent of four more. Sparing dive. There's the semblance really of uh, a chance. They need some brilliance, Somerset. They almost had an opportunity in the form of Holloway. Fine field up here in Holloway, but on this occasion, just eluded him. 45, to Hancock. <laughs> Bob each way there, I think, in that appeal. I'd imagine this is possibly one of the better balls of the morning. She'd done something off the pitch. <laughs> well, that's close. Just uh, heading down leg side, one would suggest. Looks like just could have got a just got a little bit of a nick on that. Ian. And the hundred up. Brilliant start from the Gloucestershire point of view. Safe, assured, cashed in on anything wide. 22 overs gone. What an absolute beauty. He's been the pick of the bowler so far. And once again, we see a beautifully straight seam. Coming back down the slope at Lords. Oh, more good fortune. That will frustrate Somerset even further. Genuine edge. He's hit it just between two men, one racing in from cover on his right hand and the bowler. And it's been picked up about level with the stumps, and they've still got a single to give Hancock his half century. That's good stuff. Hit 
Referee very tight. And they'll get an overthrow. Fielder will just about be able to cut off the four overthrows. Now there's chaos at uh, the pavilion end with the runner. Uh, Hancock does as well. It's beautifully struck. It was well engineered also. Go, go. Well, there was a bit more chaos there because uh, the running batsman Barnett was slightly impeded by the bowler coming across the field. I think he reckons uh, he needs to be on his way, just get a bit of a start uh, on the walk back to the pavilion there with a direct hit. Yes, it is the first wicket. No blame can be attached to the bowler there. The bowler was quite right. He's within his rights to start going for the ball. And Kim Barnett has gone. 49 for him, and Hancock is 57. 125 for one now. Robert Cunliffe, the new batsman. Get in, Jamie! Another example of his driving. Neat stroke. The other good thing about him is he never seems to be trying to hit the ball too hard. It's more timing than that. And uh, that will be a great comfort to him. He's come back well. He was given some hammer early on with 26 from four overs. And suddenly he's come back and got the outswinger to work this time. Found the outside edge and it was a very good catch by Rob Turner. Perfect outswing. Pitch just outside off stump and it was late swing again done the batsman there. Robert Cunliffe goes for three in Gloucester 129 for two. A couple of breakthroughs now for Somerset. Michael Lane is the new batsman, the skipper of Gloucestershire. Hey, <laughs> easy as you like. Fantastic, Marcy Roy, fantastic. One! Good stroke. <laughs> That's marvellous running as well. Hancock has been the architect of the singles and the twos as well. Come on! That is a very, very clever piece of batting. It's the shortest boundary on this particular day here at Lords. It's uphill, so the ball's going to travel more slowly across the outfield going uphill, but it's the placement. <laughs> Gee, that's clever. Another very good run. It, it'll look like that uh, the fielder made the mistake. And made it possible but uh, pretty good running 150 up now for Gloucestershire beautiful stroke last ball of your spell and you strip it in short and wide and that is a tremendous square cut is in a little purple patch here that's a big wicket Mark Elaine doesn't he know it not good batting this the problem will be that he's tried to hit a straight delivery too square on the onside watch the bottom hand and the little flick of the wrists 
which means there wasn't enough of the bat face going at the ball. Snuck it in between. That is a huge blow. It's 161 for three. Jack Russell, the new batsman for Gloucestershire. Two comebacks, one by Graham Rose, where he picked up a wicket, and then another one. And Jarvis brought back on at the end opposite from the one he bowled before. And he's picked up a very, very good wicket. Hancock has played well out there for 74, and he's gone. Doesn't Paul Jarvis just love it? Struggled earlier. Like Graham Rose in the previous early uh, over. Taken a vital wicket of Tim Hancock. On that occasion, Nigel Plews has no hesitation. 161 for four now, Gloucestershire. New batsman is Matthew Windows. He comes out to join Jack Russell. Very close. On this occasion. Benefit of the doubt has gone to the batsman. Leave this pitch just outside the red zone. Now, there's a very good example of excellent umpiring. It's uh, several occasions where there's been a bit of a fumble today. The batsman have been able to take full advantage of it. Brilliant. Brilliant from Matt Windows. He's why he's gained a reputation. He can latch onto anything short and wide and throw the blade at it. Look how he's waited for this. Weighted head still. And crash. Oh, that's a good shot. Crisp and clean. Beautiful strike. Well, he got the first one uh, with one that looked as though it might fractionally have been going down leg side. And now he's got another one very, very full length. Fullest ball from Paul, Paul Jarvis. And, well, you could argue it could have been going down the leg side, but it's uh, good fortune for Somerset. 180 for five now, Gloucestershire. New batsman is Ian Harvey, the uh, Australian player who's with Gloucestershire this year. Nicely played. Towards third man, attempted joker by Andrew Carrick. Yeah, it's dangerous. Beautifully played. Straight as a die. Well, it's in the air. It's a total miscue and it's taken well maybe the worm has turned because that should have gone over square leg for six that's where he's trying to hit it and it ends up in the hands of holloway running back from point full toss can be so important at the last the last six to eight overs he etched it and it's a good catch in the end of in holloway very very important wicket for somerset point of view in Harvey goes for seven and Gloucester 193 for six. Jeremy Snape is the new batsman for Gloucestershire. <laughs> 200 up. That's uh, taken a little bit longer than uh, Gloucestershire would have liked. Oh, hello. 
Now, I think I've seen earlier in the day, Andy Caddick has warned Jack Russell. It's not pretty stuff, this, but he's sending him a message saying, yeah, if you want to um, back up too far, my friend, you want to steal a bit of ground on me, <laughs> I might have you. more good slow ball but very important to run to Gloucestershire <laughs> well close very close with bit of keeping sensible bit of umpiring won't be much in this one at all Rob Turner's having a great day. He's definitely out back to the pavilion. Two ten now for seven. Snape gone for eleven. Six deliveries left for Jack Russell to work some magic. And there's a bit of it. At last, they get it through. In the air. And taken. Good catch. Safely pouched. Catch it as it burns. Good safe pair of hands. He did exactly right. It may have been the slower ball again from Jarvis. It went high in the air. Had to wait a long, long time, but he never took his eyes off the ball. Caught it high up, cradled it into the chest. So ball goes for five. It's eight for 2.24. Another slower ball. Got him, Pete! Got him, will come back. There'll be a run out here. Yeah! Take, yes, I think Jack Russell's gone. Uh, going upstairs again. But uh, a naked eye tells me that Jack may have been struggling here. Having said that, you wouldn't say that Somerset are uh, hugely confident. He has the ball. Ooh, that's tight indeed. Now, yeah, benefit of the doubt, yep. Shit, got it right again. Two more. Russell will face the last ball. Let's get back. And they come back for two. A little fumble. And then they get them. So they get 2.30. Yeah, and that uh, 2.30 was very much down to that effort from Jack Russell at the end. 31 from 37 balls. From him. Have a look though at the top of the order to Kim Barnett and Tim Hancock. They set the tone for Gloucestershire today. They ran superbly well between the wickets, and that uh, first wicket partnership really got things going. That is a good score. Chasing uh, in a cup final is tough. Somerset fought back well after an indifferent start with the ball. There were two wickets for uh, Graham Rose, five for Paul Jarvis, and yet uh, early on he was all over the shop. Caddick nice and steady, and a decent support from Jason Kerr and from uh, Parsons as well. Right, uh, 231 for Somerset to win uh, the final. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll see how they managed in their reply. Welcome back to Lords for highlights of uh, today's NatWest Trophy final. We left it with Gloucestershire having made 230 for 8 in their innings. That is a rate of 4.62 if Somerset are to win the game. We're going to pick up play now with the score at 5 for no wicket in the third over. Ian Harvey is bowling to Peter Bowler. Ian Smith 
and Richie Venno are in the com box. Yeah. Beautifully bowled. A late out swing up, with no better ball, and Harvey has broken through. The bowler is gone. There's a heap of experience walking back to the pavilion here at Lords. This is a good piece of bowling. Very consistent, just outside the line of off stump. Beautiful length, just moves a shade. Catches the outside edge. It's a huge breakthrough and an early one. It's five for one. New batsman, Piran Holloway, a left-hander. by Cox. Holloway wasn't certain he was going to come for the second, but Cox was through very quickly. <laughs> Albert Avenue. No bewilderment there for Jamie Cox. Mike Smith is now being engulfed by teammates. Very good player, Jamie Cox, by that reaction. I think they think he's a great player. Well, it took them a long time to catch Mike Smith. He was going around like one of the athletes in Seville. Now, looked pretty good there. Cox has gone, nine for two. Mike Burns is the new batsman. Brilliant. Didn't look as though it quite carried. It was uh, at a thick edge. Oh. Not much in it. Jack Russell had his back to the umpire, so what he saw was the batsman trying to make his ground. Zone shows the pitch is uh, well outside the line, and well, it's the height on this occasion because it hits him in the line of uh, middle and off stump. Jack Russell's brought himself up to the stumps, <laughs> got one that's uh, bounced a little bit more than usual, and he's made it look dead easy. takes his turn. Absolutely, Darren Holloway is full of talent, full of confidence. He has been getting runs this season. Oh. That's top class bowling again. And oh, it's unlucky. It's a terrific effort to stop the ball as it roared to the boundary. Very, very fine. Got him. Tremendous cricket. Most impressive spell of left arm swing bowling from Mike Smith. There's reward for him there and a lovely slip catch. Problems for Somerset. This was a perfect delivery to a left-hander from a left-hander. Going away from him, late swing and good catch in the end by March Ball. Here in Holloway it is, who's gone, 13, it's 37 for three. Marcus Triscothic, the new batsman for Somerset. Good stop. Just another example of uh, the Gloucestershire mach machine in good working order.
good bowling. Now, uh, we have celebrations that may be premature from Gloucestershire. They are premature. Not a movement from Marcus Triscothic, and neither is there one from David Shepard. This was again the late swing I've done the batsman here, but the ball was nowhere near the bat. That's why Marcus Triscothic was highly rated when he arrived in the first class game via the England number 19 side. Pretty good stroke. One of those where the batsman has to keep believing that it's on. It's a very decent bit of batting. Someone said Balcony agrees. Wonderful old fashioned back cut. That shot's bring the 50 up for Somerset. <laughs> Got it this time. Dicing with danger burns outside the off stamp. Martin Ball is the catcher again, and this time it's Mark Elaine who picks up the wicket of Michael Burns. It was a very, very difficult catch, and he did it perfectly. Michael Burns goes for 26, and Somerset of 51 for 4. there for the umpires to have a little bit of a chat and uh, David Shepard has said that uh, he can't give a decision standing out there at point but he's going to ask for the third umpire to decide if the ball carried and what a superb catch Things not looking good for Somerset at that point. Only Michael Burns really making uh, any impression with the bat. But credit for it to the uh, bowlers from Gloucestershire, particularly early on with the new ball. They were most impressive. Mike Smith has a chance still of being involved with one of the England teams this winter. That performance will have done him no harm at all. Eight overs, two for 23 with uh, the new ball. One for Harvey and two for Mark Elaine, another possible for uh, England this winter. Things now depending, I think, mainly on Rob Turner out in the middle. We'll take uh, a commercial break. When we come back, we'll see how he and the rest of the Somerset players got on. Hello again from Lords and uh, the highlights of the 1999 NatWest Trophy. Somerset are pursuing 231 to uh, win the trophy from Gloucestershire. They are in serious trouble. 52 for 5. Marcus Triscothic has just gone. Rob Turner is uh, arriving at the crease to partner Keith Parsons. The bowler is Mark Elaine. a nice straight. It's lent into that quite beautifully. Good save. If it's a good throw, it completes a uh, brilliant piece of work all round. Not quite so good. And I would say that that is... Uh, Say goodbye. Let's split the field then. Well, might get a green on the basis that it's too difficult. Yep. 
has made it. They'll get four for that. just in front of the uh, ball who's already taken two very good catches might have got an awkward bounce yes. twenty six overs to do it They've only got five wickets. Ah! Pretty well played. Going to go for four, but. To... No, mate, can mark a lane over his line a touch. Two for five. The 50 partnership came up in 71 balls between Rob uh, Turner and Keith Parsons. <laughs> Just for a moment, the bowler reckoned he was in with the chance there. The batter was playing forward just a question of um, how far he was going forward and what sort of spin it was to take the ball past leg stump a little bit of width there and a fierce shot beautifully struck Good shot. Yeah, That's very good running. Parsons has come back for the second. It's taken Turner on to 51. That's a good knock. done it. Russell thinks he has. So do the others. It's just the delivery. Well, that looked as though it found the outside edge. Russell didn't bother with the, any look at uh, the umpire at the bowler's end. And then Turner has walked after being given out, caught behind apparently. And Turner is gone. A nice chip. Just a little chip stroke away over the infield and it's carried through for four. That's a good shot. Uh, that's not been picked up either. Now Rose is a good strike with the ball. Nobody could have stopped it even if they had picked it up. Brilliantly again, Russell. He's done a little jig of delight as if to say, I know I've done the trick. Now, Nigel Plews has referred it to Mervyn Kitchen, who's in the third umpire's chair. This is what he will see. Batsman knows, I think. He started to go, and then he thought, well, I'd better give technology a chance. Problem was, he gave Jack Russell a chance. Now, 
question is, is the uh, grounded behind the line or on the line? The rule states the foot must be grounded behind the line, not on it. Out it is. The innings of Keith Parsons in the 1999 NatWest final comes to an end because the former England wicketkeeper is at his magical best. 42 for Parsons, 166 to 7. Jason Kerr with the minimum of fuss. Well, oh, this is electric. It really does seal it for Gloucestershire. But what a fitting moment that is Mark Elaine, the captain. Just take a look at this. Swoop pick up, takes aim, and a direct hit. Brilliant. Brilliant. And no third umpire needed on that occasion. What now? 171 for eight. Oh, he's bowled him all over the shop. Paddock has gone. So perhaps have Somerset. Harvey has done the trick. It's full. It's straight. And you could well say it's almost wrapped up the game. They put it straight all through the summer Andrew Carrick. It has fallen over. And it leaves them in dire straits. 174 for nine now. Oh, that is a stunning bit of wicket keeping. One of the moments of the day, one of the moments of the summer. Asking right now is um, just above ten. That's the slower ball, and that'll do the trick. That's done it. Just one ball, not the Yorker, not the quicker one, but Windows has taken it. And it is a great victory for Gloucestershire. John Bracewell, the Gloucestershire coach, was able to celebrate two cups in the summer, one in the Super Cup final and the Nat West as well for the Gloucesters. 180 all-out Somerset, the only impression coming down the order there with the Keith Parsons, Rob Turner and Graham Rose all doing what they could, but it was rather a case of too little, too late against this highly impressive Gloucester attack. Three for 23 for Ian Harvey, three for 25 Mike Smith, three for 37 for Mark Elaine. A run out in there as well, good support from McCaudron, Ball and Snape. That's the story then of the day. 230 for eight, Gloucestershire, 180 all out, Somerset, Gloucestershire take the trophy by 50 runs. Now, on uh, the Great Old Pavilion's middle balcony after play, David Gower chose Jack Russell as the man of the match. That is uh, most well deserved. He had uh, splendid days, had a splendid tournament. Mark Elaine accepted uh, the wonderful gold trophy from uh, the chairman of NatWest and afterwards I had a word with them both in the studio. You're getting greedy, Captain. Two in two at Lords uh, this year. It's a bit special. Oh, it certainly is. Um, we enjoyed the occasion last time. Couldn't wait to get back here again. And another fantastic day. I'm going home with another trophy. Do you think being here earlier in the in the summer helped your team be comfortable with the environment? It did help us a lot. Um, luckily, it didn't get rid of too much of the the preciousness of the of the occasion. Everyone was were just as tense and uh, as nervous uh, the night before, and uh, that all adds to the occasion. Uh, fantastic. Jack, uh, big smile on uh, your captain's face here. You're cradling the trophy. You just told us you love it. I love it. I do love it. Yeah, it was a great day, wasn't it? It was. You, yeah. we, we, we sat together after the semi-final in uh, the studio down at Bristol, and you said uh, you left us with the words, I hope we can be sitting together at Lords. Well, it's nice, yeah. It's uh, a good performance all round, I think. Everybody did their bit today. Um, and they've all worked hard for this one and I think the important thing, certainly the thing I was focusing on was we wanted to prove that the other cup final win wasn't uh, just a one-off you know, and prove today that we're still, still a quality side in one day cricket. I wondered, uh, Mark perhaps asked this too, what you felt the role of uh, John Bracewell has been with the success of Gloucester in one day cricket this year? It's been a very important role. Uh, he, um, he's really in charge of the intensity of, of the field and he works us hard in the drills at practice and really lets the guys know how important that role is. 
even though it might not be a, a glamorous role as you don't get the credit for it, it really adds to the effectiveness of the team. Well, talk about intensity. What about him out there? Yak, yak, yak. We pick him up on the stunt microphone, you know. Yeah, I'm sorry about all that noise. It's, uh, <laughs> it's part of the job. It's, you know, John's brought that in, various parts of the game. You know, we've moved our cricket forward, and that's why we've been successful at the moment. I reckon you've always been uh, almost as noisy as that. Jack, you're keeping wicket quite superbly. I don't mind saying that. I wondered if, if you felt that having the pressure of playing cricket for England relieved now, now that you've retired from the international game, has helped your cricket? Well, I'll be honest with you, the, the sort of burden of would I be playing, would I not be playing, would I go on tour, you know, and the selection things that happen. Um, and I just really needed to get rid of all that excess baggage and concentrate on things here at Gloucestershire. You know, I retired last year, uh, gave me a winter off, winter to train, get fit again. And I think it's paying dividends now, and all, all I can do now is concentrate on Gloucestershire cricket and put my life and soul into it. Yeah, you're certainly doing that. Uh, another who I think does it, and uh, with teams being selected for England tomorrow, is Mike Smith. He's a pretty underrated performer, isn't he? Mike has been very consistent uh, with the bowling this year. He's got us off to a fantastic start. And uh, in fact, we haven't mentioned it yet, but uh, I think the opening bowlers in every one day game we've played have done a fantastic job. And that's without mm. Courtney Walsh. I mean, you've done it without the biggest name you've had in uh, recent times because you've had such a good team spirit. Yeah, I think that's right. And, uh, you know, every guy knows what he's got to do and he believes in his own ability. We believe in each other. Um, and we're, we're quite astute out there and everybody knows what's going on. And uh, we're very thorough in our preparation and our process on the field. So I think that's, uh, yeah, everybody does their bit. Thoughts for uh, Somerset? Difficult evening for them, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, just seeing them the, the day before the game, uh, we knew the, the tension that they, they had. There's a lot of pressure on them to win this game today. At least we had a trophy in the cabinet already, and we could probably enjoy the occasion more than them, be a little bit more relaxed um, in our game. And uh, I think they showed attention early on when they were bowling. What about your ambition, quickly? Because uh, a championship must be the next thing for you both. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? You know, we're not doing so well this year in the, in the championship. Um, we've got to put that right. We're a better championship side than where we are, but we're not producing the goods at the moment. Whether that's all the one-day cricket's affecting that, I'm not sure, but it's something we have to address and put right because uh, a championship medal now would be very nice. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations, Jack Russell and uh, Mark Lane. Thanks, Mark. Gloucestershire cricket is in good hands with those two fellows. What give us to the game of cricket they are. Well, that's just about it uh, for us on Channel 4 this summer. We've had a ball that we hope you have two highlights from South Africa in the winter, the West Indies and Zimbabwe next summer. We leave you with the thought that Mambo Number no. 5, the song by Lou Bega that fronts our cricket on Channel 4, has gone to the top of the charts. We say congratulations to Gloucestershire and good night. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo Number no. 5. Some gin and juice, but I really don't wanna be a buzz like I had last week. I must stay deep, cause talk is cheap. I like Angela, Pamela, Sandra, and Rita. And as I continue, you know they're getting sweeter. So, what can I do? I really bag you, my lord. To me, flirting is just like a sport. Anything fly, it's all good. Let me jump in, please send in the trumpet. A little bit of Monica in my life. A little bit of Erica by my side. A little bit of Rita's all I need. A little bit of Tina's what I see. A little bit of Sandra in the sun. A little bit of Mary all night long. A little bit of Jessica, here I am. A little bit of you makes me your man. A little bit of Monica in my life, a little bit of Erica by my side, a little bit of Rita's all I need, a little bit of Tina's what I see, a little bit of Sandra in the sun, a little bit of Mary all night long, a little bit of Jessica, here I am, a little bit of you makes me your man.
Number five. 